Last week, we met the steel tycoon Lakshmi Nivas Mittal. Very little is known about his wife, Usha. Self-effacing, she stays away from cameras, never gives interviews, never faces the limelight. But what is known amongst the inner circle is that Usha is the pillar behind the creation of the Mithal Empire. She's the silent partner, the power and love of the man who is the steel king of the world. For the first time ever, we meet Usha and Lakshmi Mithal. Just let your thoughts, your thoughts your and dreams, dreams unfold. And Let's talk of love, talk of love to me. Usha, it's lovely to have you here and to be with your husband and you together. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. You know, uh, I've always felt that to really know a man, you have to meet his wife. Because she, she truly <laughs> reflects who he is. Absolutely. You can see when you talk to her, you will realize that uh, we two are very close to each other. We have the same family values and we take care of our children a lot. We love them a lot. We care for the society. By the way, you know your husband has credited you with 100% of his success. <laughs> <laughs> Is that fair? It's not. It's not no, fair. It's not fair. It's true that we have been very close to each other. And uh, my support has always been with him. But uh, the credit for his success is his. His hard work, his uh, business acumen. The true credit goes not to me. <laughs> but you know, that's what he also said you'd say. He said, she's going to say I get 100, whereas <laughs> I give her 100. <laughs> <laughs> when you know each other for 35 years, you can understand what is in the expressions even. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you are known to be a co-pioneer in the creation of Mithil Steel. And yet, you have kept no nameplate outside your door, <laughs> no websites dedicated to your name. Why? You see, I was uh, not totally responsible for the whole metal uh, steel creation. I was uh, only looking after one plant Indonesia. in Indonesia. Uh, and uh, that is now not part of uh, metal steel. But uh, Usha holds equal stakes in Mithil Steel as you, doesn't she, Ellen? We are life partner together, so <laughs> she has more than equal stakes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have equal power in the company, and by all rights, you have equal claim to the being uh, the third richest person in the world. You know, she, she is very, very humble, and uh, she never claims anything. Uh, that's her credit. And she knows this very well that nothing is going to change. <laughs> we are one. We are so integrated with each other. She gave me all the credit, but I told you before without talking to her that I gave her credit. But I have to say one thing. You're, you're busier than he is. Sometimes. <laughs> he, he told me that he can't even get to talking to you on the phone. He has to leave voicemails for you. It, just... it goes both ways. I also, so many times, I leave voicemail, and if it is urgent, I phone his assistant that I want to speak to Mr. Mittal now, and of course, then it's not difficult, and he has to do the same thing, I think. It's good that both of us are very busy. Mm. But she's time. less accessible than you are. At times, yes. So I want to know, what takes up so much of your time? As of late, uh, in one year, I completed three homes, I mean, two were built from scratch, from Greenfield. And, yeah, projects. from Greenfield. And uh, this house was renovated as well as furnished. And it takes in a lot of time because this is like artist's work. But are you also invo involved in the corporate dealings? Not anymore. Not at all? Not at all. She is not uh, right. <laughs> She's not telling the truth. Yeah. No. I had a feeling. I could tell by the expression. Only two things I must say yeah. that she is 
built so many homes for us. Still, she knows what's happening in their business. I always uh, reflect my thoughts, my ideas. What are what are we doing in business with her? Even Thank today, you. she exactly knows what I did yesterday and what are the issues. <laughs> why she's <laughs> she's not involved? Involved, I mean, is directly involved. M meaning, she doesn't have day-to-day -day operations yeah. on a broad str yeah. a strategic yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah, we, I always consult her. And, and if I have a strong opinion, I phone him or text him. And like and obedient husband, I follow it. <laughs> we talk <laughs> about it. Your partnership actually began 35 years ago when both your parents came to each of you and said, we found your life partner. Was, was an arranged marriage yeah, expected of you? Yeah. Yes. It was kind of arranged marriage. And I met her once, twice before yeah. we got engaged in the Calcutta club okay. on one <laughs> evening for tea. And did you talk at all? Little bit. Not bit. to each other. Little bit, no? Not to each other. You but just, we heard... We actions yeah. uh, of Looks, our telepathies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it started then. <laughs> it started then because uh, in those yeah. days you don't talk, but yeah. at least you look at each yeah. other. You. And my cousin brother was there, my mom was there, and he was alone, I think, from his side that evening. Yes. Ah. So they were talking to him and uh, they were talking about me to him. So indirectly we were talking. <laughs> you know, before I met her, I met her father, my father-in-law. Hmm. I found him a very intelligent person. He was in finance. He had some paper, paper industry and engineering. Okay. And when I met him, I found him very intelligent, very sharp and a visionary guy. I was very impressed with him and I told my father or someone in the family that even if his daughter is one tenth of his intelligence, I would marry her. Ah. <laughs> That's the. Ah. <laughs> this suddenly occurred he, to me now. What were you doing before he came on the scene? I was a student. I had just uh, graduated from BHU. Uh, I was a student of economics. W and, and where were you living? Uh, I was living at our home in Banaras. So I had come for a summer holiday to Calcutta and that's when we met and the engagement was finalized. And what did you think of him? I Tell thought, us now because I never heard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was interesting mm -hmm. but I fell in love with him on our first uh, phone conversation. When did that take place? You have to tell the story now. <laughs> as happens uh, after we saw each other and my parents uh, loved him and his parents loved me. So the engagement was supposed to happen after two weeks and the first call he made, I think we talked for hours, more than two hours at least. We didn't feel that short of uh, sentences or words mm -hmm. and we didn't realize we have been talking for two hours. That's how and I think we both fell in love with each other on that telephone. phone conversation. I think ours is a different kind of marriage where you don't communicate too much before the marriage. And it's a building of relation, building of love. I wrote a letter to her immediately after engagement because she went back to Banaras. And that's where I said to her, I welcome you as a partner. And I'm sure I must have expressed a lot of love. Yes, and uh, one sentence that he wrote that touched my heart was, uh, he ended the letter, keep smiling always. And that touched my heart the most. Yeah. You didn't like my saying that I welcome as a life partner? <laughs> yeah, but at that time I was young, you know. I was 19. 19. I liked it, I loved it. Of course, if you look back and you think about it, that was the best line, I think, uh, to start your life. I Certainly. welcome you as my life partner. That's very romantic. We've yeah, always been romantic, yeah, not in only in the beginning, but even, even today now. we are romantic. Yes, what keeps it alive? <laughs> what is it? I think uh, it is the true understanding of each other mm. and very deep respect and love for each other.
Usha, tell me, you've known him best. Did you see early on the signs, some signs in him, which would show, you know, prove his, his later achievements, his later greatness? After four months after we got married, he had to give his exam. And I saw his determination at mm. that time. And that impressed me greatly. And I still see the same determination in his work. He's very intelligent and he can uh, see things in advance. But very soon after uh, your marriage, about four or five years later, you moved to Indonesia. You moved out of a joint family to live yeah. on your own. Yeah. In a foreign country. That must have been a very bonding time for you. It was. It was. When you go to a foreign country, you become very dependent on each other. More so than perhaps if you'd been carried on living in a joint family in India. It has uh, both sides to this. When you live in joint family, you have a different family values. And when you live only as a couple, then you come very close to each hey, other. Very close. And it helps a lot. I think that really helped us to strengthen our bonding. Yes. The only thing we missed uh, in Indonesia greatly was family. His family, my family, especially when he went on his long travels. Yeah. There was nobody for you. Yeah, I always missed right. uh, the family so much. I, I can imagine. It was a difficult time as well. The language was a problem and our son was a baby at that time. But we accepted the challenge very well and we were very happy in the new surrounding. It was it full was, of excitement. Yeah, it was very exciting times. Yeah, very exciting yeah. time building up a steel factory in a foreign country. Uh, Japanese companies that are known for the efficiency in steel were closing down. And here we were <laughs> trying to start up, uh, setting up. So it was a big challenge. Yeah, very tough time. You don't build things easily in the life. You bought a second-hand car at that time, an, a Holden or something. Holden. Holden was our first car. It's a, it was a used car. Silver. <laughs> Silver, Silver color. color. Yes, I remember. <laughs> so That's that, what we could afford. But uh, Ellen, I really want to know, did you ever foresee the kind of success you've had? When you were in Indonesia and things were in that state, did you ever foresee it? I never expected that we would reach here. And I'm not a person who sets very high goal. You don't set high goals. My goalpost keeps on changing as we move forward in the life. Then you're not very disappointed if you don't succeed. Oh. It's, all, it's always been one step forward. Yeah, always make a small step forward and you become stronger and you gain okay. confidence, then you change your goalposts. So it gives you more pleasure than setting up a very high goal and you don't reach them. I don't think we ever talk uh, ahead forward uh, more than a year ahead. Is that right? For the last couple of years, we have been thinking more five-year strategy or yeah, ten-year strategy. Yeah, I'm talking mm. of those days. Yeah, yeah. in the beginning, mm. we were we were looking very short-term view. Mm. Well, in the beginning, you had just one steel mill, a small family, a little boy and a girl. We're very happy, though. <laughs> we're very happy. Still, we are very happy, but we were also very happy when we had only one steel company. So, how did success change things? You see, success brings more success and more opportunities and more mm. challenges. That's one change. And in the personal life, you gain more confidence, you gain more strength. You want to do something better all the time. Because here, from a small family, one small home in Indonesia, mm. your world has now expanded to the, to the globe. I think uh, going forward in life is al always uh, full of gains only. The losses are that sometimes you get more busy than you yes. even can imagine. But then I think you get used to that life. Sometimes uh, even our closest friends mm -hmm. cannot believe that the kind of traveling we do and the kind of busy life we lead. But we are able to cope with it very well. and. Uh, when we are together on weekends, we are still like we were in Surabaya. And except during the week, they're the voicemails. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, suddenly there were jets and yachts and homes all over the world. You know, the grandeur and scale of your life changed. And it was such a dramatic graph in such a short time. 
that do you feel you changed with it? Now, most of these things are needed. For example, aircraft you need. It's not a luxury. It's a tool for business. You have homes because you want to sometimes get away from your daily hectic routine, you want sure. to spend time with your wife, your children. And that's also very important to continue to succeed. But you're in a different business. orbit now. You're orbiting in a different world. So ha have you changed because of it? Ask my wife as a person, I don't think he has changed as a person. Do people say you've changed? Not the people that know us from many years, no. Which has also not changed, I mean. Have, have people around you changed? Sometimes we feel that. Sometimes we feel that. They have to. You have to be careful in selecting your friends. Don't you find that people try to exploit you for your wealth? No. Th those people, I think, we try, we don't uh, in interact with. Are you able to uh, assess who they are? Most of the time, yes. Who is sharper at assessing them? Both of us together, I think. <laughs> The friendship is very important to us and we interact on these issues very closely. But is it harder to make new friends now? No. 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 Or are the ones you really trust your I, old friends? We trust our old friends and we have a lot of new friends always. What impresses you in people? Their honesty and transparency to us. And you're good at reading people? Sometimes you make mistakes, but generally, I think both of us are. Usha helps me a lot in reading people because <laughs> Women when, I, when I'm talking, she's reading. <laughs> you know, she, she's right. Women have an instinct. They're much sharper yeah. uh, than men are at this. She reads them better than I do. Hmm. I don't know about that, but I think uh, so far, all our We've friends been have been. We, we have, have been, been lucky. lucky. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, between the two of you, who talks more and who listens? Normally, wife should talk a lot, but in this case, I talk a lot, she listens. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true or not? Yeah, he talks more than I. <laughs> and who has the last word in an argument? My wife. <laughs> no, you get... <laughs> we don't argue. <laughs> we don't argue at all. Very rarely. <laughs> I think this is amazing part. We have such a good understanding that <laughs> our views are very similar on issues. I can understand. So, argument comes when the views are different. We are so aligned to each other. We are so integrated to each other. There's a very little scope for argument. If the matter concerns business, I think he has the last word. And if it concerns family and home or personal life, I think I have the last word. <laughs> so true. That's so fair. True. Yeah. Though we have, till today, we have not spelled it out. Uh, but when I was talking to you and you asked me this question, this is what I felt. Between the two of you, whose heart rules and whose head? His head and my heart, that's very clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I always believe the head is stronger than heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I give you that <laughs> plus. <laughs> <laughs> but he's very sentimental. <laughs> he is. He is a very warm-hearted person. Mm. And sometimes I tell him that you are in the wrong profession. You should have been a doctor. Oh. Because he's a very caring person. I remember when my children were small, if uh, they would complain to me, come and complain to me with their little scratches, and they would find that mommy is not impressed, they would phone him 
in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's not impressed. Daddy will be impressed. Yeah. He would, first thing, he would come home and look at the scratch <laughs> and pamper them. I still pamper them. Yeah, we both do, but... Who is stricter with the kids? We both are not strict parents. I think when the children were small, like babies, I was stricter. Mm. And he only uh, played with them when he came home, so I had to discipline them yes. at times. And do their homework with them and take them to school and all those motherly duties. And did he spoil them? I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, At times I would complain to him. <laughs> I would spoil my children and I really loved them a lot. I remember that when my son was 14 years old, he wanted to drive cars, which, is, which was not allowed. And I would let him. I would say, but promise me you would drive only with me. So we would, I would provide children what uh, they would do tomorrow, today. So they don't do anything wrong. That's they true. know that their parents are there to support them. Because when I, I was a kid, I was not allowed to drive till I was 17 or 18. And you know how much but, you wanted to. And how much I wanted to. What I did not get in my life, I would provide my children in advance. So that's how I spoil them, yeah. I believe. When Adit was a baby, when we first started the wire rod mill in Indonesia, I think the first wire rod came out at uh, midnight. And, and he came uh, with you to the... And he and myself, we were all there. Watching the watching. first wire rod coming out of yeah. the mill. And he was, even as a baby, he was excited. He was awake and he was very alert. He that loved work. it. So in, in what way is... Aditya's relationship with you different to your relationship with your father? I think uh, our relation is very unique. We are very close friends. More than father and son, we are close friends. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we are like partner in business. Though he's my son, we respect each other's views. And we are aligned together so much. It's very difficult to see relation between father and son. A lot of people think that we are like brothers. But also when, when uh, Aditya was uh, going to Wharton Business School, I believe uh, Ellen was so upset he didn't even go and see him off. Yeah. <laughs> I went with him <laughs> and he and... Yeah, I didn't go, yeah. Yeah. He was upset. I think uh, both of us, when we talked of him, our tears would, would, uh, tears would roll down. So who's more emotional out of the two of you? I'm trying to make out. In some matters, he is. <laughs> I'm stronger as far as children are concerned, I think. In, a, in difficult situation, I'm more emotional and she's strong. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because I get involved in so many things, so many issues. And sometimes you need uh, someone to be strong in the family. And that's where she is strong and I'm emotional. Mm. But on a day-to-day basis, I think she is more emotional than I am. <laughs> on little things. <laughs> <laughs> on the unimportant little things. <laughs> who, has a, who has a bigger sense of humor? He has. Clearly he has. There's He's no fun in the life without humor yeah. and fun yeah. and excitement, yeah. jokes. As a family, we, the six of us, really have a very good time. We That's laugh right. a lot. That's right. I tease them a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he's known for teasing. <laughs> Te but not teasing you. Of course, he teases me like anything. <laughs> well, Always. <laughs> Who has the more kula dil? I don't know about myself, but I know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I think in shopping, <laughs> I have. <laughs> but no, we both uh, jokes apart. I think we both want to do a lot for our society mm. and community. And uh, though we have not been able to do as much as we would like to, but uh, we both have a kula dil. And if somebody is uh, in trouble, we like to help. I think I respect his feelings a lot. Mm. When my father died, he was the head of my family and he told me that now you are the eldest, so you make sure that 
nobody in the family uh, has any problems. And I, I don't mean just my family, but the extended family. And I think uh, that way he has a more kula heart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet. I love watching both of you. OK, this beautiful house, which is supposed to be 500 crores, who chose it? Surprisingly, this is the only house he chose. <laughs> oh, you chose it. <laughs> we had both seen this house in 98 beginning, and we loved it. Mm. But at that time, the owner of the house, he wanted to sell it, but at a very high price. Mm. And so we thought it's not worth the price, <laughs> though we loved the house. And then when this came for uh, sale, again. Sa sale again, and at that time, he was very keen. And I said, no, I don't want we are so well settled in our present house and I don't Why want move? to uh, and there's so much of disconnect in this house and then both my children came to me and they said mommy you always have your say in houses if papa has liked it just say yes so I said okay I'll go to the house and just be by myself for two hours and see how I feel and see how I feel and I felt yes it can be uh, made into a home and it can be practical and then I he was in Paris at that time I phoned him and I said uh, yes let's buy the house and that's how we bought the house <laughs> since then I've been uh, trying to make this house into a home warm and cozy like we would like to live everything you see in this house has been selected by Vishnu and everything <laughs> has a history so it would take me years to understand why, what is the history of each and everything, what she has done in this house. <laughs> and Ellen, you hardly spend time in it. I love to spend a lot of time, but there isn't life has been very busy yeah. the last couple of months. Mm, I yeah. have to spend a lot of time. Yeah, Every sure. weekend I'm here normally. Yeah, there's so much beauty around to enjoy at this house. People have set a new standard in weddings for the family. Vanisha's wedding, who, who planned that? These things are always uh, fall in my portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> How did you choose Versailles? I took my daughter to Paris and showed her all the venues that I had chosen. I had always loved Versailles and uh, I thought we should have one function there for the sheer beauty of the place and on the way she was telling Versailles no I don't want any function in Versailles and when she saw Versailles she said mommy this is the best because she uh, appreciates art and architecture a lot and she said mommy this is the best it truly is it's splendid majestic we must have taken huge planning Yes. For many months, huh? Yes. It takes in a lot of time because you have to go into every detail. more like an, an army maneuver. I must say we got a lot of support from French authorities. The French were so interested in doing up a Vedic style wedding and the Indian uh, artisans and the French, uh, French artisans worked together with a lot of respect for each other. Our uh, party planners from India went there and set up the whole mandap and the tent for the dinner in the Rajasthani style. And I remember 
sell around telling me that I never knew India has so much of talent. So, five days of intense brand festivities. I started with 500 and it went to 1000 because we when we started making the list we realized that we can't leave uh, so leave, so. leave out our we friends still, we couldn't include a lot of our friends yeah and i'm sure they're obsessed yeah. The lavishness of the wedding surpassed even that of European royalty. You had Shah Rukh performing. Is he your favorite of Anisha's? He's everybody's favorite, I think. We are here to celebrate this amazing wedding and marriage of uh, Amit and uh, Vanisha. And Saif and Rani. What? What? I can say anything because I'm Mithil's daughter. Congratulations, Vanisha and Amit. Congratulations to both the families, the Mitla family and the Bhatia family. And Kylie Minogue. My daughter-in-law, Megha, she organized the family Sangeet. Uh, she was the heroine. And then my son, Adil, he was the hero. And uh, we were actors. Mommy, I'm in love with Amit. Wow! Wow, wow, sab kehte hai wow. Kya hua hai, mujhe bhi batao. She's in love and she's so happy and she really... Uh, let's focus on the issue. Who is the boy? I must check him out. You know, I never need a calculator when I have to multiply or divide. For example, I can tell you, 5448575 divided by 44332, it is... Uh, that's 122.9, sir. Good. Good. You liked him, didn't you? What do you think of him, Papa? He's nice, he's decent, he's bright, he's charming, he's loving, he's proper, he's learned, he's witty. And after all, he's a burger, like me. Oh, Papa! <laughs> Vanisha, Vanisha, will you marry me? So it was more dear to us than any other program. <laughs>
And the most beautiful program. And then the wedding. Uh, the wedding took place in Volevikon. It was called the wedding of the century. It was a beautiful wedding gift to give your daughter. Not only a wedding gift, I think it raised India's brand value in the world a lot. You know, finally people thought Indians know also how to... <laughs> <laughs> Two things in style. Which of the girls gets to dominate you at home? Out of these three girls? My daughter. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter-in-law is very humble and she doesn't like to dominate me. My wife doesn't dominate me because we understand each other so well. Uh, I think she, my daughter-in-law spends a lot of energy dominating her husband, so she just... <laughs> There's nothing left so, over. So, so Vanisha spends a lot of energy dominating both her father and her husband, that means. <laughs> no, but she is the one who can scold him at times when he is not taking good care of his health. But your family has been totally involved in your work as well as you. Even Vanisha, apparently, when she was in school. When she was a kid, she would come and suppose three of us Usha, myself, and Adita are discussing some issues. And we'll say, this thing has gone like this. She would not understand what does it mean. So she would ask me, is whether it's a good news or bad news? <laughs> <laughs> should I be happy or should I be sad? Yeah. So that's, that's how she got interested. <laughs> Today, Aditya is the CFO and uh, president of Middle Steel. How different is his motivation compared to what yours was? He has more challenges than I have, I believe. I you have, feel I he have, has more? I had different, different. challenges. He's uh, partner in all the growth, what we have achieved. Mm. So he knows that being the president of the group CFO, everyone is looking at him with more critic view rather than what normally they would look at president in the group CFO. Yeah, because first he's, the, he's his father's son. So is yeah. he there because of that or does he have to prove himself? But good thing is that he has gained his position. 
-hmm. not that it was given because of his own virtues. Yes. He worked hard, he's very intelligent. I believe he's brilliant. Level headed. Even Wilbur Ross has said, why doesn't he leave whatever he's doing and come and join me? He's so brilliant. At well, I don't think he can afford to dream. No, he can't. <laughs> 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 but tell me, your children have lived all their lives abroad. Venetia's been born abroad. Yeah. Are they Indian? Yes. How? At heart they are Indian. That is inborn in us and so it reflects in our lifestyle and we have given the same culture to our children. They speak Hindi? They speak Hindi, not very well, but they do and they understand Hindi. They can read and write. Have you ever shown them your roots where you started off at Two Chitpur Road? Yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> whenever I would go to Calcutta, and still I do, after all the dinners are over, all the social meetings are over, I would take the car and drive around old places where I used to live and take my children. I would show them that this is the place where I used to live. This is the tram line and this is, this used to be my, our apartments. So they Look, know where dad came from and where, where he's reached. Yeah. Could you ever live in India again? We have a home in Delhi now. But could you ever live there? I'm sure we can. I'm sure I we can. So. Would you eventually want to live there? I don't know that yet. It depends on what life brings uh, and what what shape life takes. But mentally, I think we are yeah, prepared mentally, to live. Yeah, mentally, yeah. No? Yeah. You prepared to? Yeah. Yeah, how do you keep connected to India? I visit a lot. Usha also visits a yeah. lot. Do you see Bollywood movies? Yes, we do. Do you? <laughs> we do. <laughs> that's why that's why Shahrukh and Ashwarya were at the wedding. <laughs> so who's who's your favorite uh, female actor, Ellen? I'm just thinking because <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to say one because the others will get hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. I think other than Shahrukh Khan because we have become friends with him. It's the movie that captures I our still like interest more. Yeah. I still like. I and still out like. The, out of the girls. Rani Mukherjee, Aishwarya. I don't Pretty know. Even names. Yeah, I, huh? he, he forgets the names. <laughs> I think, I think Rani, Rani and Aishwarya are Rani, his Aishwarya, favorite. Rani Aishwarya, Pritsi Janta. You? I think Shahrukh is the best. But I used to be a great fan of Amitabh, and these days I have seen some very nice movies from by Abhishek. Mm. And uh, any hobbies p particularly, uh, Ellen? I like to work out. I like to play sports. Actually, I know what your real hobby is. <laughs> his real hobby is reading balance sheets and information on his competitors. <laughs> Not as much as you think. <laughs> Am I right? Not but you know something, you'll have to give up this hobby because there are going to be no competitors left. <laughs> there is always a competitor left. <laughs> Very soon in the world. Be. There will be more but new ones coming up. I don't like to get <laughs> addicted to any one hobby. Okay. <laughs> now, for example, I started playing golf. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Every day in the morning, I would uh, go and practice. One day, I realized that I'm getting addicted to golf. Ah. So one day in the morning, I was driving to golf course, and suddenly I realized that this is not right. Turned around. So I turned back the car, and since then I never played again. So you don't have any addictions? I don't like addiction. I think it's, it could distract me from my focus. Any weaknesses for? Weaknesses, my wife, my food, my <laughs> family. <laughs> food what? I like Indian food Desi a lot. Khan. But tell me something, is there anything in life that you don't have that you want? We are waiting uh, for grandchildren. We'll get that. <laughs> that wish will be granted as well, <laughs> very soon. What are the things you feel with all that you have that your money can't buy? Happiness. And I think uh, I want to spend more time with my children, my wife, my family. This, I think, is lucky. Perhaps I'm a family person, so I want to spend more time with them. You know, I've loved each moment of talking to you. You know what you've done? You've made Indians stand up straighter and try harder. 
And I think more important than that, you've taught them that success can come with grace and humility. I want to thank you both for, for sharing your lives with me. And it has been really a pleasure talking to you. This is the first interview which we have given to anyone jointly. Um, and on private life. On our private life. And especially, Usha, this is your first <laughs> television interview. I'm, I'm so delighted and honored it's with me. Thank I'm, you. I'm very happy that it's with you. Uh, you put me at ease and I'm really delighted to have it with you. You're wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll be looking at you, I'll be looking... Only me. Uh, now there's nobody in the room but you and me. So not the camera or nothing? Never look at the camera. You know, <coughs> oh, just you and I? Okay. And the camera's just are sneaky, you know, hiding. You're not oh. supposed to be there. It's just you and me. Okay, then it's... Okay. Which is the most important camera? All. All? All? This is, okay. This is Mine? Please, let's go. He'll just have to leave. <laughs> They're able to hear your heartbeat, that's the problem. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and it's going like her heartbeat. Sometimes. Which, which is true, which is true. <laughs> what happened? Helicopter. Helicopter. Probably yours. Okay, can I no, carry Prince on? Charles must be taking off. I'm glad there is no retake yet. Nothing in your way to take you guys. <laughs> it's amazing. And you've been wonderful. Honey, and you know, serious and emotional and everything. Very good interview, really happy.